Hi there, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer. So today we're going to create some cards with simple movement. This is a wonderful way to add a little something extra fun to a simple card design. The best part is you probably have the supplies you need on hand and you can do this with a variety of stamps and dies. I have many examples for you. They're all holiday cards, but you can definitely use this technique year round. I think it's best to start out by looking at the completed card so you can see the movement. We'll start with this card and check this out. As soon as you pick up the card, you can see that the head nods back and forth. So easy to do and it really makes it a more interesting card design. I'll be using this new Spellbinders Magical Deer die set. It is oh so cute and it's part of a new collection that have this kind of folk art style. I'll be using several of this style in today's video. These are pretty uh, easy to figure out how to layer the pieces together and you can do a lot of different looks with them. Now I did all of my die cutting off screen and I'm going to show some of the assembly here. I do like to double up my die cuts just to make them a bit stronger, especially since I'm using a lighter weight cardstock on some of the pieces. I use the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive and a fine tip bottle because that really is strong and a little goes a long way. All right, so now I have the body of the deer assembled. I am going to do a little bit of die cut inlay into those little areas. However, I'll show you a trick later to save time if you want to um, get the same look, but with less effort. All right, now for the antler here, I am putting two die cuts together once again so that it's a little bit stronger. By the way, that paperweight, I will mention that in a future video. Any kind of paperweight is really helpful in making sure your die cuts stay together while the glue dries. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is glue these little antler to the back of his head. Then I have another die cut that I'm gonna glue on top of that. I want the back of this die cut, which is gonna do the wobbling, I want it to be smooth. So by putting that extra die cut on the back, the back of it is smooth. Now that I have the head and the body assembled, it's time to add the movement to the head. And this is surprisingly easy and you just need a few basic tools. I have a card panel here that is four by five and a quarter inches, and I've positioned my deer where I want him to be. Nothing is glued down here, just placed where I want it. I'm now going to make a pen mark behind the deer's head, right at the center back of his head onto that card panel. This is where we'll need to die cut a small circle. Many circle stacking die sets have a small circle die. Even check your coordinating dies. Sometimes there's a small circle die included in that. All right, so we have the hole, which is the first part of creating this kind of wobble effect. Make sure that it is positioned so it's behind the area that you want to wobble back and forth. Next, you need a piece of acetate, something heavyweight. You can cut this from packaging. You could use a piece of heavyweight cardstock here. I just like the strength of acetate, but look at what you have on hand. A lot of heavyweight packaging would be great for this. I've cut it into a strip that's about two and a half inches by uh, a little more than a quarter inch. It really doesn't matter how wide or how long. You just want a narrow strip of acetate. On one end, I'm putting some double-sided tape. This is Lawn Fawn double-sided tape. Anything strong will work here. Now we're gonna take a penny and place it into that adhesive. If you are against using pennies or inside of your cards, you could definitely use a washer here, something that is flat and heavyweight. And a penny is pretty heavyweight compared to the paper on the card. All right, now it's time to add this into our card to create the pendulum or wobbling effect. I usually cut the acetate down so that the overall height of this is about one and a half or two inches. It really doesn't have to be a perfect measurement. Now on the other end of that acetate, I'm putting a round foam dot. If you don't have round foam dots, I'll talk about other options later on. So here we have this acetate with a penny on one end and a round foam dot on the other. We will now place this behind that card panel and put the foam circle into the hole. So the penny is on the back side of the card panel. I now can remove the release paper from the foam circle and place the head of the reindeer onto it. Now watch, the pendulum that we created on the back with the penny allows the head to swing back and forth. 
I do have more tips and suggestions for this technique, which I'll share in the next examples, but let's finish this one up first. I thought it'd be fun to add a little interest to the bottom of our card panel. So I'm using my Spellbinders die cut machine along with the Spellbinders Ski Lodge embossing folder. I have a small piece of green cardstock and I'm lining it up in the pattern of this and running it through my die cut machine. These embossing folders can be used with any die cut machine you may have. And this will just add a little bit of texture to the bottom of our card panel. I do recommend not putting any kind of texture behind the piece that wobbles, behind that deer's head. We don't want to hinder that movement. So this will be just at the bottom of that panel. We can now add this panel onto a note card. I have a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches over there on the right. On the back of our card panel, we're gonna put some double-sided adhesive. I will put this all around the back of it, except you'll notice there's a window around the pendulum. You wanna make sure that this window is big enough that that penny has room to slide back and forth, which is what gives our card movement. You also don't want the tape too close to the bottom of the penny because you don't want it to get stuck anywhere. So there you can see that open window around that pendulum. Now I'm putting a second layer of foam tape. The foam tape I'm using is pretty thin and you want this to be pretty thick so that that, pe or that penny can swing back and forth without anything stopping it. If you have a thicker foam tape, you may only need one layer. You could, instead of foam tape, stack scraps of cardstock too, which is a great way to save a little money, use up your scraps, and make your card nice and strong. So after I have two layers of foam tape on all of that, we can tape our reindeer head in place. The reason I'm taping it here is I don't want the penny to swing and get stuck to the foam tape as we add it to our card. All right, so now we'll remove the release paper and add this right to the center of our note card. We then can remove the tape on the deer's head on the front and you can watch it swing back and forth. This is such a simple and fun way to add movement to your card. All right, now let's finish off the rest of this card panel. Again, you want to make sure you don't put anything that will hinder the movement of that reindeer's head. So I'm putting a lot of my embellishments and sentiments towards the bottom of the card. That way I don't have to worry about it getting in the way. I didn't use the embossing folder on the entire card panel because I was afraid the texture from that would hinder the movement of the reindeer head. So I just used that texture on the bottom. Now I will tuck the reindeer body underneath that and then we'll check and make sure the head moves freely and it lines up nicely. This is an advantage of using liquid adhesive. I can wiggle and move the body until I'm happy with where it is. For the sentiment, I'm using the Spellbinders Mix and Match Holiday Greetings die set. I'll put here on the screen the different words included in this set. I'm just using the word sending for this particular card. So I die cut the sending from pink cardstock and I'm gluing it right next to the deer, right above that little pink cardstock strip that I added. For the rest of the sentiment, I chose to use a hot foil plate. You could definitely stamp the rest of the sentiment or just use the die cut words. I'm using the hot foil plates called Sparkle or Glitter Wishes. You can see there are lots of sentiments in here and a die to cut them out. What I chose to do is take one of the hot foil plates and tape it right along the edge of a piece of pink cardstock. I like to create a hinge using a piece of tape and that hinge will allow me to flip up that hot foil plate and slide some hot foil underneath it. This is the prism, which is one of my favorite colors. I put the foil underneath the word holiday cheer because that's what I'm using on my card. And then I have my hot foil machine. I place it all face down on the warmed up hot area in the center. I put the two plates on top and press the timer button. When the timer button is done flashing, I'll take all of the plates out and run it through my die cut machine, which will apply pressure. If you want to see this process close up, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. You can use uh, any die cut machine to do foiling. You just need to find out which foil machine works with the die cut machine you have. They all work very much the same. So there we have the foiled holiday chair. Instead of using the coordinating die that comes with these hot foil plates, I just use my trimmer to cut it down to a small sentiment strip that I can easily add to my card. 
Now it's time to decorate our deer. You could leave it simple if you want. You could add anything you want to the antler to add a little pizzazz. You could do little die cut stars, gems, anything. I chose to use the tiny flowers and leaves included in this deer die set. I use my pickup stick, this tool here, to pick up those little die cuts and put them right into the liquid adhesive, which really makes it easier to handle small die cuts like this. Now again, you can decorate this however you want. I just thought these flowers were really fun and this non-traditional holiday color scheme was fun too. I also used Ranger Glossy Accents to give a little bit of shine to the nose of our deer. By the way, I put my Ranger Glossy Accents into a fine tip bottle from Gina K Designs and I found that it's working. I haven't had any problems with it getting clogged. I do tap the bottle on my desk when I'm done and kind of burp it into a wipe that I can throw away to make sure the nozzle is clear before I put the cap on, but it's working so far. All right, so here is the completed card. Check out how that head very freely moves back and forth. As soon as you take it out of the envelope, you can see the movement. Now, I had a lot of fun embellishing him. I really like to add those little details. However, you could keep it simpler if you want. I'll share a tip in a moment. Or you could do this with other dies you may have. Now, notice I did die cut inlay with those tiny little dots on the deer. I enjoy doing that. I don't know why I find it therapeutic, but if you don't want to do die cut inlay, which I understand most people don't want to, you can instead just glue a piece of scrap colored cardstock behind those little holes as I'm doing here. That way, when you add it to your card, a color shows through, but you didn't have to take the time to inlay each of those pieces. So that is a huge time saving option. All right, let's do our next example. And of course, let's start with uh, looking at the completed card. Here we have a little ornament that really freely rocks side to side. So this is something you could do with just a basic circle die and kind of create your own ornament. But I use the Spellbinders Nordic Ornament Die Set. There are actually two different ornaments in this. I'll use the larger one on this card and the smaller one on our next card. I like how all of the dies are included to do some basic layering. This is a simple one to put together. So I chose to do some bold colors again, this time some blues and some pinks. And I'm just assembling the die cuts. If you have trouble figuring out how um, to assemble different layering die cuts together, always look at the manufacturer's site. They always have examples and you can just follow along or you can follow along with the examples that I do. Okay, after I assembled my ornament, it's time to do that background. I'm doing white foiling here, but you could definitely do a background stamp if you prefer. This is the Spellbinders Plaid Tidings Foil Plate. It's one I've used before and I really like. I have a piece of pink cardstock that I'm taping right to the center, creating hinges along the top. I really feel like creating hinges is the way to go when you wanna get your foil just right. I now can flip that up and slide my white foil underneath. So Spellbinders just came out with opaque black and white foil, and this white looks amazing on colored cardstock. So I thought it'd be great for the background of this card. So I'm just doing the basic foiling process and look at this white result on the pink cardstock. I used the opaque black in one of my previous videos if you want to check that out. I'll link to it up here on the top right. While my foil machine is still hot, we'll do our sentiment. I use the Spellbinders Merry Glimmer Sentiment Hot Foil Plates and Dyes. So both are included. And here you can see the words that are in this set. I chose to do Seasons Greetings. And I'm hot foiling the Seasons Greetings with the new Magenta Pink Foil. This is a sparkly one. It's gorgeous. And it'll go great with the pink I used on my ornament. So I'm cutting a few strips here because I'm going to foil some extras that I can use on uh, future cards. But here I just have my foil that I'll slide under the hinges that I created. Always make sure that the pretty side of the foil touches the hot foil plate. So I'll just flip those foil plates down and then I'll add that onto the glimmer machine. Once we let the timer run, we can run it through our die cut machine and there we have beautiful pink shimmery foil. I can't get over how easy foiling is after you get the hang of it and how much it adds to your card. Now I'll use the coordinating dies to cut those out and we'll be able to add those to the bottom of our card panel. 
But first we need to die cut a hole for the pendulum effect. So I've got my ornament placed where I want it to be. And I'm putting a pen hole behind the topper of the ornament. So right there. And that's where we'll die cut our circle. Now the circle die that you want to use should be a little bit bigger than whatever foam circle you're using. I'll link to the foam circles that I use below. Now we're creating the pendulum just like we did last time. I have a strip of acetate and I'm putting adhesive on one end along with a penny. And on the other end, we'll put our foam circle. If you do not have a foam circle, you can use a foam square. Just make sure you put it so one of the corners of the foam square points up towards the top of the card so it looks like a diamond. That way it will hinge nicely or do the pendulum effect nicely. You could also use a tiny button there instead. All right, now we slide that foam circle into the back of our panel, place the ornament right onto that foam circle, and there we have our pendulum effect. Now, if you want to see how to do this with a small button, if you don't have foam circles, I will link to a video up here on the top right where I used a button instead of the foam circle. It works just as well. All right, now we can put our two layers of foam tape around the pendulum. Notice there's lots of room for the pendulum to swing side to side. And then we can pick this up and add this on to our four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And let's give it a test and notice how it swings wonderfully. We can add our season's greeting sentiment to the bottom of the card and then add whatever embellishments we want to our ornament. I did use silver thread to create a bow and I glued it to the top of the ornament. It's easier to glue a bow to the top of the ornament than it is to tie a bow around that die cut. I also added a few silver sequins just to catch the light and add some sparkle. Notice that I did some simple inlay with the pink hearts at the top and the blue stems of the flower, but then I also stacked additional die cuts for dimension on the flowers themselves. I think that's a fun way to really make that ornament stand out. If you do not have an ornament die like this one, you could always kind of create a little topper by hand cutting one and adding it to a circle die cut. And you can create your own ornament. Now in this example, we're gonna step things up and we actually have three elements that move. This uses the same ornament die set that I used on the last example, but uses the smaller ornament dies. I have a card panel that's slightly smaller than five by seven inches, and I foiled a sentiment along the bottom center that says, may your holidays be bright. I also have created three ornaments that are the exact same, all using that Nordic ornament die set. We need to get these spaced so we have three holes to create three pendulums, so they all move freely. So I'm using my T-roller and I'm finding the center point of this cardstock piece. You really don't need to get this just right because they're going to be moving so nobody will notice if they're not evenly spaced. But this helps me out. I'm going to put a little dot behind that ornament topper where I want it to be placed right at the center of the card. I will then make a dot for my placement of the ornament to the left of that. And then to figure out where the dot should be on the other side of the card, I'm just going to measure the same amount over. So I'll just make sure that dot is dark enough and lined up with the one we've already done, and then make a dot the same amount over from the other side. You definitely could eyeball this. The engineer in me just wants to measure it out. All right, now we need to use that small circle die to cut a hole at each of these dots. We also need to create the three little pendulums for it. So I have three strips of acetate, and I'll tape pennies to the bottom of each, and a foam circle at the top of each. Now here I'm putting them all on the back of our card panel, and I'm putting a piece of tape on those. I don't want these moving around when we go to add the ornaments on the other side. So this piece of tape will just hold them in this upright position, and you can see I have all three lined up. All right, now we can flip this over, remove the release paper from our foam circles, and add our ornaments. Again, if you don't have small foam circles, you definitely could use little squares, or you can use tiny little buttons. You do want to make sure your die cut circle openings are close in size. You don't want it to be too big uh, so that you can have free movement but not let the hole be seen as it rocks back and forth. All right, now I'm just taping the front of those down so those ornaments are straight. And we can put our double-sided tape on the back, two layers, 
all framed around those three pendulums. I'll place this onto a five by seven note card. I had to make this card bigger to be able to fit all three of the ornaments and allow free movement. We can remove that temporary tape and here we have our completed card. I love how these swing back and forth and they have such free movement immediately upon taking it out of the envelope, you can see the movement. And because of how we put the tape on the background, these won't swing around, they'll just swing side to side. I did add some little silver sequins onto the ornaments for a bit of sparkle and then tiny little silver thread bows at the top of each of the ornaments. Now as I was creating this, I thought it'd be fun to do the same design but have three tall flowers that would swing back and forth. There is a flower die set from this line of die sets from Spellbinders. I didn't have time to include it in this video, but here is the die set. It creates such fun folk art looking flowers and it would be great for this particular design. You would just put the foam circle behind the top of the flower and then let the stem swing side to side. By the way, Spellbinders gave me permission to share these images in this video. All right, let's do another example, this time a mini slimline version and a larger, more solid image where the whole thing will wobble side to side. Now off screen, I got all of my pieces ready. We have a mini slimline note card that I cut to be four and a quarter inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. I have a craft piece of cardstock that is slightly smaller and our assembled bird. Now this bird die set does have tail feathers you can add to it, but I decided to skip it for this particular card. I've placed my bird where I want it on the background panel, and I'm gonna put a dot behind it, kind of in the center of it. This is a bigger image that I want to kind of rock back and forth. I could put the dot behind his head, but then just his bottom would swing back and forth. I wanted the whole bird to wobble side to side. So I put that dot behind the center of the bird, and then we'll do the little circle die cut right on that dot. After cutting the circle, we can do our foiled sentiment on this background. I'm using the Spellbinders Cross Line Foil Plate Set. I really like this background plate. I've used it before. And the sentiment works really nice at the bottom of a mini slimline card. I have my Spellbinders yellow tape that I'm creating that hinge at the top of the foil plate. I really like the Spellbinders tape for hot foiling. I find that the heat of the glimmer machine doesn't mess with the stickiness of the tape, so it works really well for it. Now this time I'm using this red glimmery foil. This is their new Christmas holiday foil pack. Beautiful foils in it. I'm using the red sparkle. I'll place that right up against the hinge, close the plate on it, and run it through our foil machine. After I foiled that, I created my little pendulum, just like we've done many times in this video. I'm taping it on the back so that it's nice and straight, and then we can remove the release paper from the foam circle and place our bird right onto it. I do like to use the tape to make sure the hinge is going up and down so that when we uh, have our card in the up and down position, the bird will be straight. So now I'll remove the tape from the, from the pendulum and there we can see the fun movement of the bird. I used two layers of foam tape to create that frame around our pendulum and we'll place this right onto our note card that is three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. So here you can see the completed card. This whole bird kind of wobbles side to side. So it's a little bit different than the others which had more of a swinging motion. This kind of goes side to side because we put that foam circle right at the back center of the die cut. So this shows you can use a variety of dies to create the elements that will move around. You could even use stamp and die cut images. All right, now for a completely different style of card, but again, using the same technique. This has a little dog whose head wobbles from side to side. I think this is the cutest thing ever, and I might have to make 4,000 of them. And when I say I make 4,000, I don't actually do it. I just really want to because I like it that Here much. Here is the die set I used. It's called Special Pet Delivery Dies. This has everything you need to create a little doggy and a little kitten. So for you cat lovers or you dog lovers, you have both options. Here is an example of what the cat looks like. I didn't make this card, but I got it from the Spellbinders website and they said I could share it. All right, now notice this is a little bit different than my other cards. 
behind the head, which is going to wobble, I have that die cut uh, gold and white frame. So we're going to have to create a circle hole at the center of this and our card panel. It's not hard to do. I just wanted to demonstrate this in case you want to do some layering. So I know I want my dog to be positioned kind of towards the top of this oval that I created using that die set. So I've got the head where I want it to be and right behind the head I'll do a little pen dot and that is where we need to die cut a circle. So I'll just use that small circle die and it actually will cut through both of these layers at once. However, we now need to put a circle on our card panel too. This panel is four by five and a quarter. I'm positioning my frame where I want it to end up on my card. Once I have it positioned there, I'll put a dot at the center on the card panel. So right at the center of the hole we've already cut. Then we'll use that circle die to cut once again. Now we can glue this frame onto our background. I've already created our little pendulum of acetate with the penny and the foam circle. I'll put the foam circle through the hole and then I will tape that penny down. Again, it's good to tape it so it's in that uh, up and down position so that when you put the dog head on the front, it'll end up straight. So now we can add our little dog head onto that. This is so cute when it wobbles, I can hardly stand it. Uh, and then we can add the body below it. I had mentioned not putting too much behind it to hinder it, but this little bit will be fine and we'll test it many times to make sure that we have free movement before we glue everything down. All right, so I added the little hello banner in it. That hello is from the same die set. We can remove the tape and now let's make sure it moves freely. It sure does, so now we can finish the rest of the card. I put two layers of foam tape on the back, creating that little opening there in the center for the movement of the pendulum. And I will add this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch red note card. To make his eyes and nose stand out, I used my black glaze pen just to put a little bit of shine and dimension, but you could also use glossy accents. At this point, I realized I glued my panel onto the card upside down, which I do all the time. This is how I fix it. I cut the a second half of the card off and just glue our panel onto a new note card. I can save that piece I cut off for a future project and now no one will never know that I messed up. But I'm not done I'm messing up. I'm gonna mess up again. <laughs> Let me show you. I decided to stamp a greeting from the Spellbinders Christmas Pups stamp set right onto the background. I should have done the stamping before putting the foam tape behind it. I didn't think of it, so I thought I would try stamping on top of that foam tape, and I had a complete disaster. You'll see there, my sentiment isn't completely stamped, so I need to cover it up. So I cut another card panel, this time from white cardstock. I cut a large oval from the center, stamped my sentiment on there, and I'll glue this on top, and no one will ever know I messed up. So if you ever mess up when you're making a card, try to see how you can get creative in fixing it, without having to start over. And here I messed up again. I got a fingerprint of black ink, so I used my paper sander just to remove it. I was kind of falling apart at this moment. I'm not sure why. I think I was running out of time before Lila came home from school, so I was hurrying too much. But it worked out in the end. Here you can see that fun movement of that dog's head. I think this is so much fun, and definitely one that you could do with lots of stamps and dies you may have. There are a lot of critter stamped images out there and you can, this is going to sound bad, but you can cut the head off of your critter and make it wobble and then just put the body back below it. So I hope you'll try this technique. It really is a fun way to add simple movement to your card. If you're interested in what I used, it's linked below in the YouTube description as always. You can go to my blog for a lot more information and you have the ability to bookmark cards and videos for future reference. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other pendulum type cards if you're looking for more inspiration. Thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful day and I'll be back soon with more ideas.